Hello everyone, Ray and I are here with Fix the Family, bringing you truth without compromise for the family. You know, this video blog uh, is going very well and we are having a lot of success with it, so we think we're going to keep that going and give William some work to do. And he likes to edit these videos out quite a bit. You know, when we started this program a couple of years ago, we knew that because we were doing this for God and doing it for God's people, that, that the dark side would rear its head and, and give us some heat. And it didn't take long for that to happen. And we recognized that that showed up in the, in the person of the feminist agenda, the feminist movement, and the feminist philosophy, ideology that's so pervasive in our culture, in our society. And even, uh, even amongst Catholics, even amongst good Catholic men and women, uh, don't realize the feminist leanings that come out in their thoughts and their actions. So we're here to expose that, to bring that to the surface, to get everybody thinking about it and realizing it. And so we're going to have a number of these blogs where we're going to talk about feminist lies. And uh, if something better comes up in, in, in the meantime, you know, we'll throw that in there, but we'll do these for a series of them. So feminist lie number one is that feminists are pro-woman. They're not. They are anti-male and they are for promoting women into uh, just doing things for their own good, for, to prove themselves. They feel like they have to prove themselves to society, prove, prove something to their own selves, uh, that, that uh, they can do whatever men can do. To prove that, I want to show that the feminists aren't really pro-women, pro-woman. Uh, we had a document that was written by uh, the Holy Father, the year of my birth, actually, 1968, the Humanae Vitae, where he held the church's teaching as a good Holy Father would that contraception is not allowed, and that it is, it is an evil, and it is uh, not to be used by, by Catholics. And he made four predictions in that encyclical, and uh, two of them directly talking about the negativity of contraception toward women. The first being infidelity and moral decline. You know, and this affects both men and women when somebody commits adultery or when people just live like animals and have sex with anybody because contraception is readily available. But it more severely impacts women because of the, the care of the children and because they, uh, they take more of, of an emo emotional scarring as a result of it. But I want to focus more on the second prediction that he made, that there would be a loss of respect for women. Paul VI also argued that the man will lose respect for the woman and no longer care for her physical and psychological equilibrium and come to the point of considering her as a mere instrument of selfish enjoyment and no longer as his respected and beloved companion. I see that quite a bit in our culture today, don't you? Do we see the feminists out there um, trying to restore this dignity to women that, that this has done? No, they want more contraception, as much abortion as is possible, just so that women can do the things that men would normally do, just so that they can prove themselves. You know, and then we hear this common phrase that's thrown out, it definitely comes from the mouths of feminists, that, well, what are you saying, are women just good to be barefoot and pregnant? Well. I don't know, what's wrong with being barefoot and pregnant and why is having a career or education so much more prestigious or respectable than giving birth, than bringing more children into the world? What does our Catholic faith tell us? Doesn't it tell us that it is so much of a high calling for women to participate and to, and to bring forth a new life? We should be open to life in every act as a married couple is supposed to be open to life. So what is wrong with being pregnant. So here we go. If you have a problem with being pregnant or you think there's something wrong with it, don't have sex and don't get married. Go ahead and have your career and all the material possessions that you'd like, but don't have a child just because it's something that you feel like you need to do to be a woman, some for your own know, selfish reasons, because you're not going to care for the child as he needs to be cared for, cared for anyway. Is the feminist agenda, the feminist ideology, are they pro-woman? No, they're not. We here at Fix the Family are definitely pro-woman. We don't put a value on women based on a price tag and dollars and cents. No, we see women's value for the real things and the beautiful things that they can do. The bringing forth of new life as our faith tells us, being open to children, making a home, a beautiful home, to bring these children into and to nurture them and to raise them into being future Catholics that will praise God. 
This is the beauty of woman. She, she appreciates the home that her husband provides for them. And this makes for such a sound, beautiful, wonderful family life. So we want to congratulate and show our appreciation to all those wives and mothers out there, those that have the opportunity to be a stay-at-home mom. We appreciate you. We, we uh, encourage you to keep it up and to, to, uh, to raise some beautiful Catholics for the future of our church and the future of society. Come back for some more of the blogging here at Fix the Family. I'm Raylan Alamon. Come back and see us. God bless you. Oh, and by the way, click like and click share.